tell us your first um, conscious thoughts of the score as a Bears player. So you're 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 here. You're playing for the Bears. Did you drive around and listen? Did you hear about the station? When when did it enter your consciousness? You know, I, I think it had to be in the locker room. You met all the media people or saw all the media people, and I'm like, okay, there's TV stations, but there's these radio reporters that are interviewing us and talking to us. I'm like, all right, I got to turn on the car and listen to what they're talking about. And obviously back then in 98, they had some great personalities on that station and I got hooked. I mean, I got hooked right away with Mike North and Jiggets and all those guys. And um, you sit there as a player and you listen. And, and I was one where I laughed because I'm like, they have no idea what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as you sit in that chair, Speaks, you think, you know everything that's going on in the locker room, what's going on in meetings, what the vibe is of the team. And, you know, you have a good feel most of the time, but well, I'll say that the other way around. A little bit of the time, not most of the time, but it was great. It was just great entertainment to listen to. And, you know, some guys would get upset and be like, can you believe they said this? They said that about me or they're saying this on the radio. I'm like, it's entertainment as well. And that's the way I kind of took it. And that's how I kind of fell in love with it and uh, have been listening ever since. And just, uh, you know, I guess I call myself a scorehead. Well, and Patrick, you were, as a player, in a pretty safe spot to listen to sports talk radio as True. the long snapper. You weren't going to get a whole lot of of critique from, from all of that. But when you did hear your name pop up, was it, was it, did you like, grab the, the knob and turn it up where you, where you freaked out or did it just no, not right. happen? Grow to, no, you're right. The first times when you're younger, you're like, oh my God, they just said my name on the radio. <laughs> I can remember my first score interview was with North and Jiggets when I first signed my uh, long extension. I was so nervous to talk to those guys. I didn't know like what the questions were going to be about. I didn't know how it would sound on the radio, but that was a mem memory that uh, I think it was my first time ever on the score. And I'm like, wow, I'm talking to these guys that I listen to all the time. So to me, they were somewhat celebs as well, just because I thought they were so entertaining and so good at what they did. Wow, that's really funny. So did you have teammates who who hated the score uh, um, among your teammates? Do you remember? Br Brad Maynard. <laughs> and really? Brody, he's one as well. Like, why are they talking about the punter? Right, or right. He just hated – he was so protective of the team and all that kind of – he's like, you believe what they're saying? He's one, too, that would tell me – you know, he listened to it quite a bit more than I did, but he hated it. He's like, I can't believe they're they're talking about us this way. They said this about Erlacher. They're talking about Olin this way. You can believe they talked about Briggs this way. And um, I'm like, it's just entertainment. But he he took it personally. He didn't like it, but he listened. He, like, hate listened. You know what I mean? Oh, he, yeah. He wanted to oh, hear yeah. what was going on. He, and he went on the safe <laughs> FM station for years. Yeah, yes, he did. Yes, he did. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was a softball one. There. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that that's fascinating. So back then they didn't know anything, uh, according to Patrick Manley. <laughs> but now it's changed, right? Especially when you're on, Patrick. Uh, now, oh, 100%. <laughs> well, Speaks, that was the hard part about when you and I were working together. How much I honestly knew what was going in that locker room, and how much I had to hold back and couldn't let out, to, even to you or anybody around the station. Yeah. And that was hard. And then it started to go real south. And I remember I was like, you know what? F it. I'm doing it. I'm going to tell the, tell the open story, the real story of, you know, the way Tressman runs practices and lets everybody get away with stuff and just the standards keep slipping. And I felt better when I did that. And what, what I got out of that as well is I felt like it was a way to talk to the McCaskies and say, listen, this is really what's going on in Hallis Hall. I'm not sure if you know. I'm sure you do. But, you know, I was just there. And this is the, the tenor of that locker room, that practice field and everything there that it's just not healthy. It's not good enough. And I, I held back for a while and then finally I let it go. And I'm like, Oh, thank God I did. I just feel better about it. And hopefully they listened. Um, and obviously he, he moved on, but it was better for the bears, but it just was not going in a good direction. See a, a lot of, a lot of times I think that we assume people know the full history of the score, even recent years. And truth is that we have listeners who sometimes are new or have come and gone or whatever. The Spiegel and Manley show was a midday show that followed um, the Danny Mac show, which became Mac and Speaks. Um, and then all of a sudden I was driving and my partner was, was Pat Manley. And you and I got a chance to work together. And I remember very well, Pat, sitting there and seeing you struggle with what to share and when oh. to share. It was... It, it was it was rough for you because you had friends there and you you wanted to protect. And I remember the moment you're talking about. Was that the moment? Because because I remember you saying, yeah, sometimes Mark Tressman would talk about practice and he would say, you guys did a great job. And we'd all be like, no, we didn't. No, we didn't. Yep. yep. Is, yeah, that, is, is that one of the moments you're talking about where you decided to let it all hang out? 
that that's exactly when it was. That was the one. I'm like, I just got to tell this story without getting too personal about other people or what's going on in the building. Just talking about the standard and how it was slipping. And I just had to get that out there. But but speaks going back and struggle struggling talking. It was just hard to get transform myself from a player to a radio host. That's got to be the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. That's harder than snapping a game winning field goal. I remember you remember like the meeting we had me, you, Jay and Shep. I think it was like on a Saturday. And we're going on the air on a Monday and we're trying to put the show together. I walk in there. I'm like, what are we doing and how do you do this? <laughs> and I think you guys looked at me like, uh-oh, how are we going to work with this guy? <laughs> oh, man, I did not know what I was doing. But I'm I, I really happy that Mitch gave me the opportunity. I mean, that's something you cannot say no to. I mean, there's New York, L.A., Chicago, and those three major media markets. And to be in a chair that you guys are sitting in right now on a radio station you know, in a city like that was just truly an honor. And it was, it was, it was an awesome time. Wasn't there something too, that you, you said on, on the radio, on the score with Spiegel that upset like Lance Briggs or something like that. And then oh, you guys, yes, I did. What was that story? Well, he's still mad at me about it. Really? We talk about it all the time. Oh yeah. Um, you remember he was not there, I think, for the first practice of the season because he was opening up his the uh, restaurant, barbecue, his barbecue place. Yeah, Double nickel. I just said I was, yes. double, and I just like I couldn't believe it. I really could not believe it. I just there's no way in heck he would have done that in our locker room with the guys we had there before with Erlacher and Olin and everybody. I just don't think he would have, and I think that's part of uh, was Mark Tressman's problem as well that he actually said yes <laughs> um, that's right you know yep. you can ask you can ask but the head coach should say no no you need to be here for the first day of practice so yeah he uh, got a little upset at me and then I think a day later I get a text message from Charles Tillman and it's Charles with like a like a uh, fake knife acting like he's stabbing Lance in the back and he goes is this what it feels like <laughs> oh, wow. so my old teammates are busting my uh you know what and I just thought I just laughed I'm like okay it's over with he it was a joke. It was, you know, that was Charles like trying to break the ice with all that stuff. Oh, I like, yeah. yeah. Maybe I, I went a little too far with that, but that's what I felt. I mean, I would have been upset. Uh, and I said that on the air. I would have been upset as his teammate that really, you know, our, our starting linebacker is not there. Well, we all we all saw, you know, you dealing with something that we've seen since and talked about since where the the athlete has to turn that page and decide where the loyalties are. And it's an incredibly, incredibly tricky and difficult thing. I um, I have such fond memories, Patrick, of those, those shows that we did together with Jay Zawoski, with Nick Shepkowski and the team building. Like, I think oh, it yeah. was I think it was your idea to do the team building activities each one of us was responsible to plan an evening or a day of activities um i'm mm -hmm. trying to remember what jays and sheps were I, I should have asked them in, in advance i remember mine was i got in touch with buffone and we all went out to dinner together um in in little italy which was which was amazing but yours was yours was epic you, what you did, <laughs> Pat, Patrick Manley trumped us all. He took us to South Bend, Mark. He took us to South Bend. I remember to a yeah. game at Notre Dame, and we're on the sidelines for a game at Notre Dame. Thank you for that. Still, by the way, <laughs> no, that, that that was a blast, man. And that's something too. Like I go back to being in that room with you guys. I didn't know you guys. You guys didn't know me. I'm like, how do we get to know each other? You have a sleepover, right? <laughs> so we went and had a sleepover <laughs> at Notre Dame. I'm like, what's a way we can spend a whole lot of time together? <laughs> Maybe have a couple too many cocktails and really get to know each other. And it worked yeah. out perfect. And yeah. it was a great weekend. And uh, yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. But that was that was fun. But I just I, I just wanted to get to know you guys better to try to make the show sound like, you know, your guys shows do now. And I, I think it helped a little bit. It definitely did. It definitely did, and 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 that was you bringing the teammate ship that uh, Phil Emery would later say you were you were so <laughs> right. famous for. Uh, absolutely, yeah, that, was, that was a blast, man. That was. Uh, that was just a good trip. I mean, we had everything going on. Pat Foley was there. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we had a blast. But and, and now you get to do what you really love to do. That that you yes. had fun doing the talk show, but you stepped away because you mm -hmm. wanted to just focus on covering the Bears. I drove him out of the out well, of the business. Yeah, no. I was trying to be nice. No, <laughs> yeah. Nope. You couldn't No, that's not at all. I you know, honestly here, you know, I, I did say it when I, uh, one of the last days I was there that to sit in those chairs you guys are in, you have to have a passion for all sports. Yeah, some days are going to be better than others or whatever, and maybe you don't want to watch the Bulls play the Portland Trailblazers on a Tuesday or whatever. That was kind of me. But when I hear you guys talk, it's about all the sports, and you guys are you know totally invested in the Bulls, the Blackhawks, Cubs, Sox, everything. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to do that. I was trying so hard. I bought three TVs, put them in my basement. 
I would leave dinner to go down and watch the Bulls tip off at what, 7.15 wow. on those Tuesday nights. And I'm like, oh God. And I love basketball. I was a high school basketball player. Loved it. Favorite sport. But I'm like, I'd rather be up there having, you know, dinner with the family. And uh, I just didn't have the passion. And I've talked to, you know, other people in the radio business that they want to go downstairs and watch the games. You know, there's certain games they want to watch and they're into it. And I just could not bring that. I didn't feel like that was fair to you, Matt. I didn't feel like it was fair to the station. And it wasn't fair to me. I just, I, I could not do that daily. And, And the problem with me too is I would work my tail off and I would do it but I would not enjoy it at all. And that's what I started to do. And I realized actually I was on a Disney cruise over at Christmas break speaks and I was having a cocktail or two and I'm sitting out on the balcony. I'm like, you know what? I got to quit. Can't do it. Mm, Just can't do it. And that's, that's when it came to. And that's when I came back and told you and Mitch that, you know, it's time for me to move on. I'd love to stay part of the score, but I just cannot do the daily show and bring that energy and passion that you guys have for, for all sports. Well, good for you, man. I mean, because, you know, go ahead and, and live your life and be happy and spend your time with the fam. And you did it. You totally got the mm-hmm. feel for exactly what it is. And it's uh, it, it, it can be a tricky thing. Um, now, do you still listen now? Do you still listen oh, yeah. on the daily? I, I know you do. Oh, the Odyssey <laughs> app is always on whenever I get in the car. It's either that or Spotify, but normally it's uh, the Odyssey listening to you guys oh man and 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 it, it's been great obviously to hear you doing doing bears uh pre and and bears post and do you still uh, how's that uh that idea of like you know um trying to take care of the bears and tra- take care of your media life uh that balance going at this I, point? I love it so like right now you know is kind of getting bored a little bit and um i was unable to do the score uh, the uh the draft stuff this year but to me, when it gets to football season, it makes me feel like I'm back in the season. I get in that routine. I do the same thing on Monday for prep, Tuesday for prep, Wednesday for prep. You know what I mean? Get my film study done during you know certain hours of the week. And that, to me, feels like I'm still involved with the game. And, and I love it. I absolutely love it. And I love working with Mully and, and, and Olin on, on Sunday mornings. And that that's you know that's the fun part of it. But I also really enjoy like talking about the passion of all the sports, the football thing, of working for that show and preparing for that show. I mean, I love it. 